All right. 3.3 and 3.4 quadrilateral properties. So we're going to be looking at different quadrilaterals in this unit. We've talked about different quadrilaterals, such as the idea of a quadrilateral is a four-sided shape. Every quadrilateral could be classified further. For example, if I take a four-sided shape, just a randomly drawn one here, okay? So the idea is this is some randomly drawn four-sided four shape. It can be classified further as a parallelogram, which has opposite sides are parallel to each other and equal in length, all right? And a parallelogram can be further classified as a rectangle, where you have opposite sides are parallel, and the adjacent sides meet at a 90 degree angle, and all four sides meet at a 90 degree angle, so that all the opposite sides are equal in length, just like a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel, just like a parallelogram, and the two sides meet at a right angle. Then we can classify a quadrilateral as either a, uh, so a parallelogram can be classified as either a rectangle or a rhombus where it is a parallelogram, the opposite sides are equal, opposite sides are parallel, and all four sides are actually have the equal length, such as such as you see here, or a parallelogram, which could be a rectangle or a rhombus, could be further classified, so the rectangle and rhombus can be further classified as a square. A square is, as a rectangle is, opposite side, so as a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are equal, just like a rhombus and a, and a rectangle, but the special case of a square is that opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are equal, in fact, all four sides are equal. That's what makes it special. But it's also that the adjacent sides meet at a right angle. So it is a special type of rectangle as well as a special type of rhombus. All right, noting all of those. Moving forwards, what else are we looking at? Well, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So if we look at a parallelogram, we draw the the diagonals, the diagonals will cut each other in exactly half. Knowing this, though, we move forwards and say that, okay, if we join the midpoints of the adjacent sides of any quadrilateral forms a parallelogram, and that's kind of neat. So we can take a quadrilateral, any one, find the midpoints, join the midpoints, and that will guarantee to form a parallelogram. That's a cool property because once we know this, we know that the diagonals of this particular parallelogram will also bisect each other. Cool. Next, we're looking at the line segment joining the midpoints of the non-parallel sides of a trapezoid is parallel to the parallel sides and has a length equal to the mean of the lengths of the parallel sides. So let's look at that. Here's your trapezoid. We take the midpoints of the sides that are not parallel, that would be these sides right here. We take the midpoints, connect it. Now, what that means is this line is going to be parallel to these two lines on either side, and the length of this line is equal to the average of the length of these two sides here. So if I find the length of 1 and 2, and I add them together and divide by 2, that will equal the length of line 3. So this is all dealing with length. So you'll notice that in quadrilateral properties, we're specifically dealing with things that involve lengths and slopes. Again, that's the common theme here, folks, lengths and slopes. All right, in example number one, you're given the vertices P, Q, R, and what you do, and S. And you're to classify the type of quadrilateral performed by these points. So you're to graph the points. Very important that you take a sketch of the points. If you're given graph paper, graph the points. Take a quick take some quick time to actually graph the points. Graph the points and you find P, Q, R, S and you connect them. Why? Because what you want to do is make sure that everything connects to something. So P and R do not connect, for example. So you're going to do P to Q 
then Q to R, then R to S. And you're going to connect them. So P to Q, and that's what we're, so we're finding the slope of PS first. So little m of PS is equal to, now, how do you find the slope? Again, P, this is the coordinates. You write them going upwards. S, you write that going upwards and subtract them. PS, the slope of that is 24 on top, negative 18 on the bottom, and you reduce it. Always reduce the slope. So you find out the slope of PS is negative 4 thirds. Slope of QR, find the slopes, subtract them, and you get 24 over negative 18, and you get negative 4 over 3. So the slope of PS is equal to the slope of QR. That means the opposite sides are parallel. Then you find the slope of PQ, which is equal to 27 over 36, and slope of RS, which is equal to negative 27 over negative 36, which is 3 quarters. You notice that the slope of PQ is equal to the slope of RS. So these two sides are also parallel. What else is unique is look at these two slopes together. So QR and PQ. So PQ and QR, these two right here, there's something unique about the angle that these two make. Well, how do you know? Negative 4 thirds, if you flip it and take the negative reciprocal of it, you're going to find out that it's going to be positive 3 fourths. So not only are the opposite sides parallel, their adjacent sides are perpendicular. So that means that we're narrowed our information down to po two possible types of quadrilaterals. It is either a rectangle or a square, and that's what we need to do next. We need to find the rectangle and the square, or a square. So how do we classify a rectangle or a square, the difference between them? That is by actually calculating the lengths. So we're going to find the lengths of PS. Now, how did we get those numbers so quickly? Why didn't we fill it out like we normally fill it out? Well, I'm going to show you a neat relationship between the distance and the slope. Let's look at the formulas for distance and slope. I want you to notice that the, look at the x's down here. That is the same as the numbers inside here. So we already calculated x2 minus x1 for PS. That would be this number right here. So negative 18 was x2 minus x1. So that's the number I put here. And y2 minus y1 is the same number as the numerator. That's the y's. That's your delta y. So I just put the delta y values there. And we find out that it equals root 900, which is 30. Do the same for the next one. QR and... PQ and RS. And folks, we find that the distance is of the opposite sides are equal, but they're not all equal to each other. Therefore, quadrilateral PQRS is a rectangle because the opposite sides are parallel, adjacent sides are perpendicular, the opposite sides are actually equal. So opposite sides are parallel and equal, and the adjacent sides are perpendicular. That means that they have a 90 degree angle. All right, down to the, our last example. Again, you're asked to classify a quadrilateral this time, folks, but with different vertices. Your first reaction is to actually graph this. So we take a quick sketch so we can connect the proper letters, P, Q, R, S, and find the slope. You're going to find the slope of P, Q, slope of R, S, the slope of Q, R, and the slope of P, S. Once we do all the slopes, we find out that opposite sides are parallel, but adjacent sides are not perpendicular, so they are not right angles. So our choices now, since opposite sides are parallel, is it's either a parallelogram or a rhombus. We need to prove which one is which one it is. So take the length of PQ, distance of PQ, length of RS, the length of QR, and the length of PS. 
and we find out that the answers to all of these is equal to the same value, root 13, each time. So guess what? Our quadrilateral here, folks, is, lo and behold, PQ is equal to RS is equal to QR is equal to PS. PQ is parallel to RS. Therefore, quadrilateral PQRS is a rhombus. So I want you to note, this means not therefore, but this means since. Since PQ is equal to RS is equal to QR is equal to PS, so all the sides are equal, we can safely say, and the opposite sides are parallel, so PQ is parallel to RS, and that means that PS is parallel to QR, okay? Because we found the parallel, we can say that quadrilateral PQRS is a rhombus. All right, folks. Okay, PQ is parallel to RS, and uh, RS, should write this, is parallel to, no, wait, sorry, not that one, but QR is parallel to PS, all right, we do that because we would need two parallel, opposite parallel sides, which we have. So we know now, then, that PQRS is a rhombus. All right, that's classifying all the different quadrilaterals. All right, let's move back one page just to see. Nope, that's it. That's everything. All right, folks, you... There we go, all of the different options. You guys have a good night. Have a numerical day. Take care.